Let's talk about rules for how to play indoor soccer with walls and how to play boarded soccer. If you've ever watched ice hockey, indoor soccer with boards has a very similar gameplay. Boarded soccer is usually on an indoor field with turf with boards surrounding the entire field. The same ball that would be used on a normal soccer field is also used for indoor boarded soccer. The nets are a little bit smaller than roughly half the size of a normal 11 v 11 goal. How large the field is largely determines how many players are on the field, but similar to hockey, it's usually 5v5 plus one goalkeeper. That makes it 5v5 indoor soccer or 6v6 indoor soccer if you include goalkeepers. Normally this means that a team's formation is a 2-2-1 whereby they have two defenders, two midfielders, and one forward. There are unlimited substitutions in the game and most leagues will actually allow you to sub a player on and sub another player off at the same time during game play. Neither players entering the field nor departing the field can touch the ball if both both players are still on the field at the same time. And of course, teams can do as many substitutions as they'd like and a stoppage of play, whether that be from a goal, a penalty, or the ball goes out of bounds. What shoes to wear is usually dependent on the turf type. On a boarded field where the playing surface is either plastic, hardwood, or astroturf, I recommend wearing flats. On a boarded field with turf that you'd find on an outdoor field, you can actually wear flats, indoor turf shoes, or regular soccer cleats. There's usually only one referee, but sometimes there's two where they have to ref the game, control the clock, and adjust the scoreboard. Games are usually 50 minutes long with two 25 minute halves and a two to five minute halftime. You can even pass off the indoor soccer walls to make it seem like you have a teammate. By the way, I'm Dylan Joseph, trainer and number one best-selling Amazon author. Anytime the ball goes out of bounds by the benches or into the netting along the sideline, a direct free kick is awarded to the team that did not last touch the ball before it went out of bounds. Except for when the defending team last touched the ball prior to it exiting the field and hitting the netting above the net on their side of the field. Then it results in a corner kick on the side of the net that the ball went out on. Goal kicks are taken from either dot in front of the net. Goalkeepers can only use their hands on the ball when they're inside the penalty area. Leagues differ on the rules for when the soccer ball makes contact with the netting above the field. Most leagues allow play to continue. However, some in indoor leagues reward an indirect free kick for wherever the ball hit the netting. Similarly, most leagues do not allow slide tackling, but some do. Turf can really tear off your leg skin, so I'd advise against sliding. Free kicks require all opponents to be at least six yards away when taken. An indirect free kick, largely from a non-contact foul inside of the penalty area, will result in an indirect free kick from the spot at the top of the arc. Penalty kicks are taken from the dot in the penalty area. Depending on where you play boarded soccer, ref referees might use penalty boxes just like in hockey. Usually, penalty boxes are used for very flagrant fouls and last for two minutes. However, unlike in hockey, you can actually take a free kick wherever the foul was committed, so a lot of leagues, even if they do have penalty boxes, they won't use them. Subscribe and watch the entire playlist series on indoor soccer tips